Lakes are great resources for fresh water. Although it may not look like there's a lot going on from the surface, lakes are incredibly dynamic and a lot of changes happen throughout the year. First, let's talk about water. You may have heard the phrase, hot air rises, but did you know the same is true for water? That's because cold water is more dense than warm water. Density is a measure of mass versus volume. That means in two containers of the same volume, cold water will have more molecules than warm. It'll also have greater mass. To demonstrate this, we put a jar of warm red water on top of a jar of cold blue water. When the two jars are together, the cold water and the warm water stay separate. That's because the warm water is less dense than the cold water. The difference in density keeps them from mixing. This tank represents a lake in the summer. As sunlight heats up the surface of the water, a warm, not very dense layer forms called the epilimnion. This is where most primary production occurs as algae and other organisms turn sunlight into food through photosynthesis. But the sunlight can't penetrate down to the bottom of the lake, and a cold, very dense layer forms called the hypolimnion. For most of the summer, the epilimnion stays about the same temperature. This is followed by a rapid temperature decline called the thermocline. The difference in density between the epilimnion and the hypolimnion keeps them separate throughout most of the summer. When the lake is stratified like this, oxygen from the surface can't mix into the hypolimnion. As decomposers break down organic material, they use the hypolimnetic oxygen. Sometimes oxygen is totally depleted. This is called anoxia. As the air temperature cools and the difference in temperature and density declines, the lake mixes in a process called fall turnover. As water from the hypolimnion mixes in with the lake, nutrients that were stuck on the bottom come to the surface and feed algae, sometimes causing algal blooms. You might be wondering, if cold water is more dense than warm, then why does ice float? That's because water is most dense at 4 degrees Celsius, and just slightly less dense at zero, where ice forms. If we put blue ice cubes in a jar of warm red water, you'll notice they float on the surface. As the ice cubes melt, the blue water mixes in with the red. Some lakes form ice on the surface during winter. The repeated freezing and thawing of the ice keeps the lake mixed. In the spring, as air temperatures warm up and the sun reheats the surface of the water, the lake restratifies. But differences in density aren't the only thing that makes the water in lakes move. Just a warning, if you're going to try this experiment at home, make sure you ask an adult for help. For demonstrative purposes, in this tank, we made the epilimnion red and the hypolimnion blue. When wind blows across the lake during a heavy storm, the epilimnion on the far side of the lake pushes down into the hypolimnion, causing kind of a tilt in the stratification. When the storm stops and the wind stops blowing, the epilimnion returns to the surface, but all of that energy causes it to rock back and tilt in the other direction. Sometimes lakes will do this multiple times after a storm. Although the epilimnion and hypolimnion are moving internally, you'll notice that the surface of the water stays the same. This whole process is called an internal sage. That's why it's really important to take caution when swimming in lakes before and after storms. We hope this video helps you better understand stratification and mixing in lakes. Thanks for watching.